Hello, everyone. Welcome to the nursing white coat ceremony for Mercy College of Health Sciences. I'm Dr. Deborah Williard. I'm Dean of Nursing, and I am honored to speak to you today on this milestone ceremony in your nursing life. Now, please let's welcome Professor Bonner for a reflection. Thank you. Um, my name is Bo Bonner. It's nice to be here today. I'm the senior advisor for mission initiatives here at Mercy College. And uh, I'm glad you all braved uh, the weather and the at one point slick roads. Uh, so thank you for making sure to come out and for everybody who's watching live. It's an honor, as it's been said by uh, Deb, to be here, to be a part of an important step in your progression uh, into the profession of nursing and for we who work here at the college, even if we don't get the chance to directly teach you, please know that it's a, an honor and a privilege to be associated with all that you do. So for a short reflection and a prayer, uh, I just think it's pertinent to always bring up um, Sister Catherine McCauley, the mother who started the Sisters of Mercy, for whom which we are, of course, named as a college. Uh, but all that we do starts um, from what she does and the sisters that preceded her from Ireland as they eventually came over to Iowa and founded many institutes of health and colleges, including the nursing school that became Mercy College. So a very simple quotation from her, quote, we should be shining lamps, giving light to all around us. When I think of a white coat, there's many things that it can symbolize, but of course one of it, the things it symbol, uh, symbolizes is its brilliance that in a way, uh, wearing a coat like that is the closest you can be to being luminous. I guess you could put lights on yourself. I know uh, fashion has uh, grown in leaps and bounds, but uh, sub literally wearing lights on you, the white coat is supposed to serve as a lamp. That when you are in a professional setting, especially one like medicine, where people are suffering, and not only suffering from physical ailment, but in many ways suffering from ignorance, not in the sort of negative term, but they don't know what's wrong with them. They've come to us, the, we in the health sciences community, asking to be illuminated. What's wrong with me? What can I do? What can be done to help my illness? So when you put on this coat, it symbolizes that you're going to be a lamp for the people who need it, a lamp of hope like a lighthouse when they are at sea, tossing to and fro in the sea of illness, not knowing where to go, but also a light of enlightenment. They come to you to ask, what is it that I need to know in order to find the way? And then if we think, of course, of all the biblical Im imagery that involves shining lamps, uh, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, or that at the transfiguration, uh, Christ's clothes shined brighter than any fuller on earth could make a white garment. All of these things point to that fundamental symbol that in the, the darkness that so many of us will eventually find ourselves in due to the frailty of our bodies, that what we do here at Mercy College and what you're entering into is this willingness to be a lamp for others. And I just want to point out one more time that someone like me, who is obviously not the paradigm of, help, uh, of health, as you can just see by looking at me, uh, but also is not trained in the healing arts, that to go around our communities to tell my family and friends that I'm a part of the work that you do is an honor and a privilege that I didn't grow up thinking that I would have. We are immensely proud of all of you, and we look forward to the day that you go into your communities being those lamps. And there's a lot that, of course, we hope to accomplish in our careers, but what we accomplish through you and the fact that you will be lamps to all those people is the height of what we do. And once more, we want to say thank you for letting us be a part of this journey. So to close with these reflections, just a short prayer if you're so inclined from the Sisters of Mercy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O compassionate God, look on us today with tenderness. 
and give us the grace to walk on the path of mercy, marked out for those who follow you. May all we do today reflect your merciful love. Amen. Thank you very much, and one more time, we're all very proud of you. Good luck and blessings on your future being lamps for those in need. Thank you, Professor Bonner. The white coat ceremony is a rite of passage at Mercy College. It welcomes you as a new student nurse into the nursing profession. The white coat itself, along with the symbolism that Professor Bonner shared with you, symbolizes the clinical service and the patient care that you're about to start doing. By accepting the white coat, you're making a commitment to transform yourself into a healthcare professional. You need integrity to do that. A professional in whom patients place their trust. Integrity is an extremely important quality for every nurse. For the past 20 years, Americans have rated nurses as the number one most ethical and honest profession. Did you all know that? Show of hands. You, it, it's a fact. And when 9-11 happened, those firefighters ripped it away from us for a little bit, and then we, we got it back. So we are the most trusted and ethical profession in the world. And I want to underline that, because we are really counting on you to continue that. And so everything you do in the clinical setting going forward and in the classroom has to be at the utmost ethical and honest way that you can do it. So the white coat ceremony, a little history. The white coat ceremony started back in 1993. There was a Dr. Gold, uh, who is, he worked at the Columbia University in the medical, he was a medical professor. And he wanted to introduce students to the Hippocratic Oath and emphasize the humanism in medicine before students started their first year of study. Along with citing the Hippocratic Oath, this, the students accepted a white lab coat as a declaration of that commitment and acceptance and the obligations of the profession. Since that time, the white coat ceremony has spread throughout the world to many uh, disciplines. So it's a very honorable tradition. And so we want to introduce you to that here. There's a lot of uh, traditions that we will pass on during your program. Uh, at the end, a pinning is, uh, a, you probably know, a, a nursing pin. Uh, that's an honorable tradition too. And so we will be, hopefully, the next time you see me, um, or hopefully I'll see you between now and then, is uh, at the pinning, and, uh, and I'll be um, very honored to put that pin around your neck. So this event marks the next generation of nursing students who commit to providing compassionate care for all they, that they serve. Students, you have worked hard to get to this point, ready to go to clinicals where you will practice what you have learned and you have persisted and reached your goal of being at the point where you can go into clinical and start practicing. So we are celebrating your success with that. And so tonight is a, is a big, I wish we could throw a huge party and we wouldn't have to wear masks and all of that, but there'll be a day that we will get to celebrate and uh, hug each other and do things like that. Studying to become a nurse is challenging and you will continue to work hard and face challenges along the way. It's not easy, but rarely is it easy to achieve something that is truly meaningful. My suggestions are, as you go into the clinical, on your way to clinical, prepare your mind. Leave, you know, if you had a fight with your boyfriend or your husband or your wife that, um, that day, put that 
aside for the time that you're going to be spending with these patients. The patients, and I, I, uh, I'm very fortunate to have spent the last 45 years as a nurse, and I know I've, I spent a bunch of that time at the bedside, but your patients deserve your full attention when you're at the bedside, whether you're a nursing student or a registered nurse. So my suggestions are you go to clinical, you prepare your mind that you're going to that's why one of the reasons why we don't like you to carry your phones or wear smart watches because those distractions and you don't want to make a mistake and if you don't have your full mind there it's um, it's dangerous so we want to want you to prepare your mind and be engaged in the activities of the unit watch the nurses listen to your college instructors who they're guiding you Follow the rules, all rules. They are enforced to protect you and the patients. Help the nurses that you're not working with. It, when you're not working with your patient, you can be out looking for something else that maybe a nurse needs a, a, to help with a patient getting them to the chair. Every time it's the practice of nurses or practice of nursing you are practicing what you know. So anything within your scope and that you have learned and your instructor is, is okay with that, then you can, you can do. Again, do extra when you're asked. If they ask you to go, go um, do something that you're not uh, trained to do, then you just politely tell them, I haven't had that in my classes yet, or you go and ask your, your uh, instructor if you can do that with them. But as far as when you're fully connected with your cares and the needs of your patient, remember that these nurses, and your instructor is included in those, those nurses that you're working with in your clinical setting, they're either gonna go like this or like this to their director when you apply on that floor. So she, don't think that she or he will not be asking the nurses, hey, you know, this, this nursing student has applied here for after graduation. And so you're on a, however, 45 hour, uh, if you're on a 45 hour clinical uh, through, through your courses or a 90 hour or whatever, that's an interview. Think of it as a 45 hour interview and that you're, you're looking good, your, your scrubs are, are not starched, but uh, that's, that's, saying, um, that's, that's showing my age there. Uh, but as far as ironed or, you know, if you have to, um, dryer sheets is usually what I use, but uh, you just have to look the appearance that you would want to put through to your patients and the other, um, you know, that your hair is uh, quaffed and, and tied back, it's not in your eyes, that kind of thing. So they're going to be hiring you. And so as far as your performance, I encourage you to make a good first impression. Every interaction that you have on the unit, in the parking lot, in the cafeteria, they're going to identify you in those purple scrubs and they know, I get calls. If you know you're acting up in the cafeteria, you know that you're being loud, and and uh, the, I get a call because they know you are a Mercy nursing student, and so you're representing us in, uh, over across the way or wherever, whatever venue you go to. So always be at your best. I ask. So as far as. I, Really, the reason I'm asking you to do all of this is because I want to be the number one nursing school, at least in the state, if not the country. So you, this is up to you to help me and the faculty and your, instruct, your clinical instructors to get us to that point. So I, I'm really asking you um, to do this. As far as your family and friends, they're, they're there to support you. I thank them for joining us today if they're on, um, looking on from home, and I wish that they could all be here for this special event. But um, we will be able to, hopefully at graduation and pinning, be able to um, celebrate with them. So again, thank you for, for uh, everything that uh, you're doing right now, and I will hand it over to Professor Hallie Hadke.
Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here and getting to read your names, to have you come up and put on your white coats. So we'll just get started. First up is Caroline Barth. Ashley Bright. Miriam Saramovic. Ashley Kashat. Pure Dawson. Amelia Doe. Henrietta Delopi. Yashua D. Mahari Gadi. <laughs> Jessica Galvin. Megan Gatliff. Stephanie Gavin. Haiti. Gross Lopez. Laura Helm. Brooke Huffman. Robbie Jelligat. Franklin Leffler. Jasmine Mello Vasquez. Tuyen Monzon. Sinabu Niasi.
Craig O'Keefe. Raina Paulette. Whitney Phillips. Viola Posiano. Maggie Reckhammer. Nicole Richardson. Angelica Rios. <laughs> Ricardo Rodriguez. Jennifer Skinner. Ashley Thomason. Chelsea Waddell. Sarah Walty. And that's everyone. Next up, we'll have Professor Moss for the pledge. All right, everybody, I'm going to have you follow along in your program with me, OK? First, a little background. Um, in 1912, the Florence Nightingale Medal was established by the International Red Cross to reward nurses who have distinguished themselves in an exceptional manner by great devotion to their patients in time of war or peace. If you are a current nurse, faculty, or nursing student, please stand and join me in reciting the Florence Nightingale Pledge. You ready? I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to faithfully practice my profession of nursing. I will do all in my power to make and maintain the highest standards and practices of my profession. I will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping in the practice of my calling. I will assist the physician in his or her works and will devote myself to the welfare of my patients, my family, and my community. I will endeavor to fulfill my rights and privileges as a good citizen and take my share of responsibility in promoting the health and welfare of the community. I will constantly endeavor to increase my knowledge and skills in nursing and to use them wisely. I will zealously seek to nurse those who are ill wherever they may be and whenever they are in need. I will be active in assisting others in safeguarding and promoting the health and happiness of mankind. Thank you. You may be seated. And please welcome back Dr. Williard. Congratulations. So again, you've worked hard to get to this point and you've faced a lot of challenges and you've persisted and you've reached your goal of entering nursing school and we're celebrating you today. Studying to be become a nurse is challenging and you will be a lifelong learner if you become a nurse. There are going to be lots of rewards and I want to make sure that your time spent at Mercy is memorable and that you enjoy at least some parts of it and I, we want to, I want to encourage you to talk to your faculty. They've been through this. We were once sitting exactly where you were, some, some of us longer ago than, than others. And I just want to make sure that uh, this is a memorable time for you. So again, uh, congratulations. Thank you for coming today. And, uh, and I know you've got to get to class. 
and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll, we won't spend too much of your class time doing this. But again, thank you. I want to encourage you to come up to the front after we close here to get a group picture. And, uh, and then I thank the family and friends at home that are watching. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you.